Good afternoon, YouTubers. This is uh, Karen Brazo from Karen B's uh, Alchemy Acrylic Art here again. As promised, uh, here's the video uh, that's actually explaining how I make my frames and prepare my surfaces for um, my pores. So, um, if you'll remember, in the last video, I actually showed you different materials that I use. So we're actually going to start with a quarter inch hardboard uh, frame. And so when you're making this frame, you also have the option of using the one eighth, one eighth of an inch over here, or the quarter inch hardboard. But for today, I'm actually just going to use a thinner one, the, um, the one eighth. So if you will recall from my other video, it was uh, this resin pour here uh, that I did on a, uh, this one here is a quarter inch hardboard. And as you can see, there's a frame at the back and that's what I'm going to show you guys how to do today. Okay, so this uh, quarter inch hardboard is about $3.45. Just a recap on how inexpensive it is to make your own frames. And this is generic uh, framing wood as well, just regular lumber. And this is actually, it comes in about 10 feet and it is $1.19. So now that we've talked a little bit about materials, or the services that I'm going to be using uh, that I normally use to do my, my paintings on, and not just my pores, by the way. You can, you know, paint anything uh, on these uh, on these surfaces as well. So we're just kind of going to go through some of the equipment right now. Uh, so of course I always have my gloves. I always wear gloves just to keep the uh, these tend to uh, sliver quite a bit, especially after they've been cut. So it's good to protect your your hands and your fingers by wearing gloves. And I also use these gloves as well, but only when it comes to putting the glue on, which we'll go through uh, that process as well. Of course, there's always the safety glasses. I always wear those because I value my eyesight as everyone else does. So I really recommend that you wear that at all times. You're definitely going to need some, um, some clamps. Um, so you can buy various ones. There's the C clamps or they're just the regular clamps. I like these nice rubberized ones. Uh, but whatever clamps you have uh, will work just fine. And you can either use uh, a metal ruler, which, which I like to use, or uh, a tape measure. But I use a, a lot of shortcuts, which I'll be showing you. I probably won't even need to measure very much today. Of course, because I'm working with hardboard and wood, uh, sometimes the, um, the quarter inch hardboard is uh, a little darker, so it's harder to see with a pencil or a pen, so I like to use just a sharpie to make my measuring marks. And of course, you have your regular big saw. You can also use a hand saw if you like, but I, I, I like going uh, with electric tools. It's a lot easier, of course. And um, I like to sand the edges of my frames. So I like to use an electric sander as well. It doesn't have to be this type to be a round type, and you can also use just a hand one if you'd like. And I've had a few questions about glue. Which glue that I use? Uh, this is Lepage Construction Adhesive. It's actually three times stronger than any other glue out there, and it's really true because I, I um, have used this glue since it came out, it's, it's fantastic. It's about $14, $15 a tube, uh, but it's really worth uh, the price and it kind of goes a long way. There's a lot in here and um, it can actually hold a really heavy resin pour. Um, so it's really, really strong. So this is my preferred glue. And I normally have, um, I guess you could probably use a paintbrush if you wanted to or something, something else, but I just keep a little bit, a little bit of the end, end of, a, uh, of a frame and that's what I use to actually spread my glue around, but you don't have to use this, you can use whatever you like. Okay, so 
Let's get started. So obviously you want the reverse side, and I like using the white side because often I don't have to apply gesso, I can actually just start pouring right from here. So I like to just use the underside. And what I like to do, I mentioned in the first video that I use um, the uh, tile edging uh, to make my, a nice finished frame on, on my paintings. Um, and they're about an inch wide, so I like to leave an inch gap all around uh, in case I do decide to, to frame my paintings, then I don't have to worry, uh, I have enough space to be able to put that in. So what I actually like to do is just to use the, the framing lumber here, and I just kind of set it so that it's right on the edge, and I just grab my Sharpie, Make a mark on each end, then I do the same. So you're doing this both vertically and horizontally because you're trying to find your, your corner. And on this side. got your corners marked and then you want to know of course uh, the length that you need to put in a frame on on this side vertically and then you want to know you know the size that you need horizontally as well so what I like to do is actually place the frame where it should go so I'm using the lines that I the first lines that I made okay so then I make another and I do the same so exactly where it should go, and then I just mark there, and again, well actually you don't even have to do it on that side. Okay, so then I like to use a metal ruler, it's a lot easier, but if you want to use a measuring tape then by all means you can do that. Okay, so what you want to do now is you want to measure from your corner here to the next corner. So this is 21 inches. So obviously your other side is going to be the same. Okay, and then we measured this as it was there. So you're gonna to wanna to measure from that point to the other point. So this one here is 17 and 3 quarters. And you don't have to mark them, but I like to do that, so don't forget. Okay, so then you do take a tape measure. I'm actually going to move this out of the way for now. Okay, you take your tape measure. And these horses are great because this, <laughs> this type of lumber actually just happens to fit right in here which is great. So for the first one, I believe it was 21 inches, so we're going to need two of those. Okay, so that's the first one. So I'm just going to go ahead and Apologize for the noise, but it'll just be for a little bit here. Obviously, you can use your jigsaw or your handsaw. So there's the first one. Today, so 
Just have to make sure we got this one. Right. Okay, we're gonna get this one as well. Obviously, I don't have enough. Get myself another one over here. Okay, so this one has to be 17 and 3 quarters. I'm going to use a clamp for this one because it's a bit heavy on the other side. See, there's a lot of uh, splinters here, so I just like to clean it up just by sanding that down. tape on the ends of these, keeps it from losing any glue. Okay, so you just apply very lightly. Well, this glue is fairly thick, 
and I like to have enough on there. So basically you're just kind of beading it right along so that you have a complete bead just going across here. going to uh, change gloves at this point. Now there's no order to this glue, um, so I don't wear a mask. If I was using glue, you know, that had fumes, I would, uh, I would wear a mask. Here you're just spreading your, your Le Page construction glue. It's actually an inch and a half that I leave across because I use the uh, the width of um, of the framing material, and it's uh, half inch by one and a half. So you don't have to clamp that right away. We will be clamping, but not quite yet. Okay, I'm just going to spread it along. Now you have quite a bit of time to do this. It takes about 15 minutes before it actually starts to harden, so you have a lot of time. You don't have to rush. Just make sure you try and get all the edges. So that's pretty much it. Then of course you want to use clamps. So I like to clamp the ends together. So you try and get both pieces together if you can. because it's such a small uh, 
a small piece that's only two feet by two feet, so 24 inches by 24 inches. Um, you don't really need to apply any clamps in the center here, it's perfectly fine. And this board will not wobble because it's, it's so small, you don't have to worry about that. So I'm just going to set this aside and we'll move over to the next type of frame. Okay, so the next type of frame, I'm actually not completely going to go through the process of this one because it's fairly easy, but I will make a, I will do a smaller scale one. So this is basically hardboard again. It is uh, one eighth of an inch. And then I have here this half inch uh, particle board that I like to use. It's fairly heavy, so it doesn't require a frame. So the only thing that I do do with this is I apply the Laplage glue on on the edge and then of course I spread some around towards the center of the uh, of the board and then I would just put this one on top and then of course I would just use clamps again but I will show you on a smaller scale um, how I do it exactly but you could use um, this nice thick half uh, half inch particle board but really is heavy so if you're planning on doing a resin uh, pour on this it's, it's going to be really, really heavy by the time you're done. Um, so you obviously don't need a frame at the back because this is thick enough that you can actually put, you know, hanging hinges that you need uh, back here to be able to hang it without worrying about needing a frame. Okay, so the other type that I like to do, uh, if I don't want a frame at the back, is just the one one eighth uh, of an inch cardboard, and then I just pick up some plywood, uh, also one eighth of an inch. But what this does is actually it really stabilizes this piece so that it won't wobble on you when you're doing a pour. So this one here, I'll do fairly quickly. It's very very simple, obviously, as I mentioned just a few minutes ago. All we're going to do is apply some glue. So what I like to do is to make sure that I get it as much as I can on the edges. I usually just like to do like a bit of an X here in the center. It's usually enough. And just a little bit here. And that should be perfect. And you want to spread this on the edge. I like making sure that there's glue on the entire edge. Not too important about this part. The uh, glue on the edge is actually enough, but I like to put some in the center here as well. Okay, so then you're just going to take your 1 8 or hardboard. You can actually use two pieces of plywood as well, but I really like this hardboard. It's nice to work with. Okay, and that's pretty much it. I use smaller clamps for these. Don't have to worry too, too much about the center. Do uh, for this one, I do like to add some in the middle as well. Okay, and that is all you have to do for this one.
and this one will hang very well without a frame and you don't have to worry about uh, any wobbling occurring when you're doing a, a pour on this. It's nice and strong. Okay, so the other thing that I want to mention is this really, really large one here that I have. This one is 48 by 48. It's actually going to be my next pour. I've never done this larger pour. It's going to be my, my largest one. And I'm not practicing before, uh, which I never do. Um, I never practice with before a pour. I just uh, go ahead and do it. So I guess it's, you're kind of like getting a live version of what I'm doing. And uh, if it works out, great. If it doesn't, well, you know what? Can't really go wrong with art anyway, right? So just wanted to show, uh, because this one is so large, I was afraid of uh, wobbling, and I probably would have had some wobbling. But what I did is I added an extra centerpiece here. You could actually add two if you wanted to. And I also add uh, these corner uh, joining pieces as well. And on these really large ones, I like to use a little bit of hardware. So you see these little flat plates here, which is kind of like little joining plates that I bought at uh, the hardware store. And they actually sell those in the same department where you buy door hinges. They're really cheap, they're like 50 cents each. And um, I like to use that just to strengthen the whole frame. And of course you would use um, the screws that come with it um, to uh, fix it to the wood, to the wood frame here. But it makes a really, really nice, strong surface. Uh, I mean, a really strong canvas. You um, don't really have to worry about any wobbling, as I mentioned, and this glue will hold a really heavy uh, resin pour, which this would be once it's completed. Okay, so that pretty much concludes the video on how to make the frames. And the next video that I'm actually going to work on is a video that will um, show you how I finish the frames. And I think I'm just going to do a very quick tutorial on what I use to hang uh, my paintings. And uh, because they can be quite heavy and I, if I sell you know, to a client, I want to make sure that um, it's not going to fall off their wall, especially uh, if it's a really heavy resin pour. So uh, thank you for watching and thanks for all your questions. It's great. Thank you.